What if I tell you you just need 7 commands of Python to do scripting in Salome? Will you believe me? No? No problem. Let me roll the intro and then we'll come back to it. is import. Import is used to import modules. Now module is a file with an extension py so that file contains your python code. Okay so it will have classes, it will have functions in it right so which is why when you say import salome so you have your, your module called salome and then you use the dot extension to say salome dot salome in it so you are initializing salome you also need to understand that when you say input module the module is not always going to be a file right it could be a directory as well but when you have directory then you'll have to choose the file within the directory so that's when you say from directory choose this file so from whatever the directory name choose means import and then you import your module well that's there is so while we are here we might as well discuss sys.path.insert well, when you import sys, that's going to have some methods and attributes to it. So that's exactly what you're trying to access with the dot separator. So you're saying sys.path, when you say that, let me run it for you. So this is the list of all the paths which you get after printing sys.path. So basically, that's where Python, it looks for the modules, right? Now, in case if you want to add another path to it, your own custom path where you are working at the moment. So all you have to do is you just have to say sys.path.insert and then you insert your insert your path. So that's here it is. Now the next command that we're going to be discussing is for statement or for loop. Well, uh, why is it used? It is used to automate stuff so you can do the same thing over and over again and that's exactly what's the whole point of scripting, right? So we are doing scripting for automation. So this is one command which is going to be used over and over. So you better get very comfortable with this command. Well, how does it work? Basically what happens is you write for and then you write a variable or iterator which is going to iterate over this iterable now in case if you don't really understand what iterable or iterator is that's fine so basically you have bunch of stuff here in the range 2 okay so if you open up range 2 it's gonna have 0 and 1 now that bunch of stuff so you're gonna be repeating this thing for item in that bunch of stuff so item is gonna take first value of that bunch in the first go and then it's going to take second value of that bunch in the second go. So that's exactly what's happening. I think a little example will help make things a little bit clearer. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, list one or list two is equal to, we are just making a list. List is nothing, but it's just a collection of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put value two, three. So these are the components of the list, right? And I'm also going to put the string value, maybe, just put maybe, right? So that's your string. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print each value using for loop. So I'm just going to say for item. So you see there is no variable defined in item, variable called item. It's not defined, but still it's going to work. You see how for item in, it's just going to say list two and then you're gonna say print and then you're gonna say list just say item don't worry right so that's what you're gonna say and then you save it and then you run it let's see what we get so you've got two three four and maybe so that's exactly how for loop works and we're gonna be using for loop let me go back there so we have for loop here we were trying to get pictures we were dumping the view so we are using for loop for the same sub yeah that's about the four now that we know what list is list is nothing but collection of different objects and we already know that what for loop does for loop it just iterates over and over given the number of times you want it to be happening so there is something called list comprehension now list comprehension is your it's just a list but then you use your for loop to populate the list 
how does that happen okay so we gonna name our list as list 7 and then we gonna so list is always within the square brackets right so we're gonna use the for loop I'm gonna say mm, for a uh, value so you can keep changing the variable name if you wish for value in range 5 let's say 5 right so this is the for loop now what are you gonna do with the for loop uh, we use for loop to do something right so that something is I'm gonna save give me a value back so every value is gonna come back multiplied by its own value right so we know when we say range 5 so that's gonna give you 0 1 2 3 4 right so what we are expecting in this list is square of numbers starting from 0 ending in 4 so we just save it and then we run it and that's exactly what we are getting right so that's your list comprehension is there is something called dictionary so dictionary can do something which list can't so which is why we have to come up with dictionary in the first place so what basically it does is say for example if you have two lists so you have this first list called locks short form for locations and then you have four values right and then you're using a list comprehension to make another list using the for loop don't worry about the format dot format as of now I'll, I'll come back to it so what you're gonna do is you're gonna zip them both together to make a dictionary called dict1 so this is the command which you're gonna be using it's zipping locks and list so locks is also a list list is also a list so basically let's just let's not confuse ourselves let's just call it list2 list2 and over here list2 yeah okay that's fine so now it's gonna zip these values together so what is it gonna do it's gonna zip first element of locks with first element of list2 second element of locks with second element of list2 let's just quickly run this and then you'll understand what I mean so you see so minus 300 is your first element of locks and it's zipped with translation 1 and now where are you getting 1 that's what format is doing I'll get back to it so that's basically what dictionary is just pairing up the values. so every element of the dictionary it will have two value uh, two values basically or two elements you can say the first element will be called key and then you'll have second element which is values so that's basically what your dictionary is how do we use dictionary I'll tell you once we start scripting so the last command which I wanted to discuss was dot format now you see very carefully what's happening here we are creating a list using list comprehension we are using a for loop for item in range 1 to 5 right excluding 5 so it's gonna give you 0 1 2 3 4 right so now what you want it to do this for loop to do is you want translation underscore and then you want for loop to change the value here so it's gonna give you translation one first then translation two in the second go and then the third step it's gonna give you in the third loop it's gonna give you translation three and so on so but inside the quotations you can just have string value right so it's not gonna change your number so what we need to do is we're gonna put curly braces here and then outside the string outside the quotations we're gonna say dot format and then you can use your variable which is item which is gonna be your numeric value now to convert the numeric value to the string value we have to use str that's exactly what dot format is used for and we'll be using in heaps once we start scripting so just get yourself very comfortable with this one yeah let's just run it and see what's happening here yeah okay let me remove this remove all this we're just gonna say print list 2 right let's run it again so this is what you're getting you're getting a list with the values translation 1 2 3 4 so that's the whole sole purpose for dot format dot format is just to keep wearing the values inside the inside your string right which is enclosed within your quotation marks so that's pretty much it all the seven commands and from the next lecture we'll start going over the main script which we get after dumping the study 
hopefully you are quite familiar with these ones now so i'll see you in the next one thank you bye